Cheshire murderess was famous in the Victorian era. Marion went on trial for murder and claimed insanity. Queen Victoria called the murder lords the stupid. Queen Victoria called the murderer morose and stupid. Mary Ann was a good mother, her neighbors insisted, but she freely confessed to the murders. Mary Ann was a good mother, her neighbors insisted, but she freely confessed to the murders. Before the murders, Mary Ann was in a terrible mental state. Mary and Brooke confessed to killing her children right away. But as the police investigated, they began to realize that Marianne's life was falling apart in the days before the murder. On June 6, just four days before she slaughtered the innocent children, Marianne's husband, George, had walked out on his family. He thought Marianne was unfaithful and hired a detective to follow his wife. When the detective spotted Mary and meeting with a man, George flew into a rage and told his wife that he would seek legal custody of the children. Right after George's threat, the children caught measles, a terrible disease that could prove fatal. Mary had cared for them alone. The children were up all night crying and Mary and was unable to sleep. She was stricken with severe headaches. She began to contemplate suicide. Unlike Queen Victoria, Mary Amber suffered from problems with childbirth. In 1854, when Mary slaughtered her children, Queen Victoria was the picture of family of bliss. She had a one-year-old baby of her own, Prince Leopold, who was her eighth child. But not all mothers were as lucky as Victoria, who had the best doctors by her side during and after childbirth. In 1852, Mary Ann had given birth to her youngest child. Her physician, Mr. Izod, reported that eight days afterward she was attacked with paralysis and completely lost the use of her left side. She also lost her speech and her face was distorted. In addition to the physical trauma, Mr. Izod also noted symptoms of a disordered brain. Not only that, Mary Ann had also suffered multiple miscarriages. Mary Ann might have been suffering from a postpartum psychological disorder when she murdered her children. Mary and murdered her six children and tried to commit suicide. After he spotted the dying woman, Henry Wolver swept through the rooms of Mary and Bruce House while a neighbor ran for a doctor. Wolver found body after body. The woman who had been the wet nurse to Great Britain's royal heir had killed her own six children. Mary and Bruce's eight-year-old son William lay at her feet his throat cut. Nearby lay his sister Georgiana, age 11, Carrie, 7, and 4-year-old twins Harriet and Henry. Finally, the youngest child, Mary Ann's 1-year-old baby George. Each child had been slaughtered with their father's razor. The house was deluged with blood. But why did Mary Ann kill her own children? A stranger found Mary and Bro with her throat cut, but that wasn't the worst part. The sun was barely up on June 10, 1854, when Henry Wolver spotted a bloody pillow hanging from the window of a cottage in the quiet village of Escher. After ringing the doorbell, Wolver found a ladder and climbed up to peek through the window. When he looked in, he saw a gasping woman with her throat cut. Her hands and face were covered with blood and her hair hung about her face, Wolver testified. She was making a whistling noise, apparently from the wound. And worse, the blood was spurting from her throat. 
When Mulder rushed to her side, he saw something even more horrifying. Future kings needed the best wet nurses, as one image warned. The nurses had to be virtuous because breast milk transmitted moral qualities. Queen Victoria used wet nurses with all nine of her children. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below. And also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye.